Gerard, can J.P. Morgan uh, be sort of the um, the unit that uh, sets the standard, at least, for what's possible in this environment? I, I think so. What we're seeing from the results that have been released today is that J.P. Morgan is clearly head and shoulders above its competitors. And it's interesting because we all know banking and investment banking is a commodity like business. There aren't any patents, there aren't any proprietary products, and it really comes down to execution. And J.P. Morgan is executing better than many of its competitors, as we've seen from today's numbers. And Gerard, given the fact that you know the market seems to get that about J.P. Morgan and has rewarded it in terms of the valuation, is it kind of game over in that sense, or is there a chance that others are being overlooked, uh, I guess, in the concentration on J.P.M.? I, I don't think the others are being overlooked per se, because it's it's a challenge, obviously, to execute as well as J.P. Morgan is doing these days, and the momentum that J.P. Morgan has will continue. That being said, though, if you look at the Citigroup results, um, they came generally in line with expectations. What was better was obviously credit quality, and they had a lower tax rate. So that one could be a little bit overlooked um, based on today's trading. Well, certainly hasn't been overlooked uh, so far this year. Uh, That's I true. Obviously, is the uh, best performer. Um, yes, what very do we true. make of what do we make of Goldman? Yeah, Goldman Sachs numbers obviously were affected by their investing and lending subsidiary or division, and that's as you may remember, that's where they value their private equity investments as well as public equity investments, and those numbers were hit hard due to some valuations in the public markets. When you look at some of their core businesses, um, we had lowered our guidance in FIC and equity trading, and they came in a little better. But I know against consensus, they were. Uh, less than you know, lower than expected. Uh, their investment banking businesses were were okay, but advisory was uh, on the weaker side for everybody. So the core business at Goldman is still you know strong. It's just this one line investing and lending, which is a very volatile line, worked against them in this quarter. Gerard, uh, obviously the yield backdrop is uh, it's been a big head one, probably continue to be for net interest uh, income. Are any of the banks uh, that you're aware of or do you think any of the banks uh, out there should be doing anything to change their sensitivity uh, to the uh, kind of suppressed level of, of interest rates right now? You're right. When you compare what rates were a year ago and expectations of what everybody thought they were going to be in 12 months, completely different. And I think the balance sheets have been you know, being repositioned as we speak. They're not as asset sensitive in most cases. Some banks going into the beginning of the year were more neutral on interest rates, so there wasn't any benefits from rising or falling rates. But I think you're going to find, assuming the expectations that rates on the short end of the curve are re reduced at least two more times between now and the fall of next year. And the long end of the curve remains around 160 to 185. I think the banks are positioning themselves better for that environment. We also need to remember, as they cut rates again, the deposit rates will continue to fall faster in each subsequent Fed funds rate cut. Yeah. Finally, Gerard, health of the consumer. Uh, Diamond took pains to say that delinquencies are stable. Uh, Charge-offs, though, were up uh, both there and to a much lesser extent. Goldman, uh, do we need to worry about that? Are we anywhere near having to worry about that? Not yet, Carl. The credit quality remains very benign for the banking industry. It's, it's very healthy. I think the lessons that were taught in 08, 09 have not been forgotten. When you turn back the clock and look at the 1990 banking debacle, that debacle led to very strong underwriting standards throughout the 90s, and that's why the 0102 downturn was not that material for the banks. I think it's happening all over again, where these banks have taken a more conservative approach to underwriting. On top of all of this, you have the regulatory environment that's much more constructive with these stress tests. So I think credit's going to remain benign well into next year.